I just got done building my brand new sled for, uh, I did around 2024, spent about the last two weeks tinkering on this thing and just got it done, which is just in time. We got vet checks later today and then uh, got to send this out. I'm actually gonna send it to McGrath. I'm gonna take one of my old trusty beaters to get through the burn and the Delzell Gorge. And then in McGrath, I'm planning to switch to this new light, fast, speedy sled. Um, a couple things I've been wanting to do for a long time on a sled and finally, I shouldn't say got the time to do it because I didn't have time to do it, but we did it anyway. Um, so the first thing is it's pretty much all carbon fiber and I had to kind of learn how to lay carbon fiber and that was a huge process. Um, of course, my cat helped me, uh, but we got it figured out. <laughs> so we, we made everything on this. I did all the sewing, all the carbon fiber work, um, made all the brackets from aluminum stock. So it's been a very time consuming sled, but I wanted to show you what I sh will be driving from McGrath to the finish line and this is pretty much gonna be my life. Well, this and the hopefully 16 dogs in front of it for, uh, I don't know, six, seven days, however long it takes us to get to know. So first thing first, we'll start with the extras. Um, super handy ski pole bag. So this ski pole can ride here. I can put two ski poles in there. I can kind of flip it out of the way um, if I need to get into the sled or if I'm you know running along, you can just pull it out, do your ski pulling, slide it back in there. And if you're on really rough trail, you can flip it over and secure it so that it doesn't bounce off the sled. Next, uh, snow hooks. You know, we end up using our snow hooks a lot, stopping, going. Um, well, I try not to stop too much, but uh, it's nice to have a good secure way. So we got the bungee over the top, rubber reinforcement where the snow hook rides. This is a common fail point on sled bags because the snow hook's just smashing on that fabric all the time. So it's a good way to keep it from bouncing with the bungee over it and rubber underneath it. Get that out of the way. Next, um, handlebar light. It's pretty nice to really illuminate your dog team. Of course, I always have the headlight on me, but then this one is nice, especially if it's uh, heavy snow, because that light on your head makes kind of the Star Wars effect with all the snowflakes coming at you. So having, it's kind of like your low beams on your car in a snowstorm, right? It's a lot easier to see your dog team there. Also, I can look into my sled or look somewhere else with my headlight and my dog still have illumination. Next is my GPS mount. This is something that's kind of handy and I kind of converted my GPS into, by drilling holes and rivets and everything else, turned it into a, a GoPro mount. So then I was able to use GoPro mounts on the sleds, this sled and this one, so I can switch it in between. I can tip it down if I'm sitting here, like look, 14 miles an hour, I like this. <laughs> or I can roll it up, you know, when you're driving. All right, getting into this sled, it's a little bit different because everything on the sled is rigid. You know, it's a hard side. There isn't really a sled bag. It's more a fully encapsulated sled. So instead of the normal zipper, which always freezes and gets stuck, we have the little bungees that you can pop open, flips open. This is Kevlar on the inside of this lid, carbon on the outside. It flips out, it rolls all the way over if you don't have your messy bench in the way. Inside, uh, we've got a carbon fiber bed and uh, yeah, come on over here, take a look inside. So inside here, this bed is carbon. It switches, it gets thicker as it goes back. So you can see right here, there's a major jump. This is where we introduce the foam core. So it's got carbon layers on either side of that. These fancy little brackets, I made those out of carbon. Um, hind joints and the corners there, so it rolls the same in the back. The tricky thing with this is this sled is very flexible. So when you're working with hard panels and flex like that, you get places where it just, you're either going to have a big gap when it's flexed one way or it's going to be hitting when it flexes the other way. So the back quarter, we convert into a sled bag. For all of you seamstresses and seamsters out there, don't judge my stitching. This is structural sewing, as I like to think of it. It's not pretty. It's tough. It'll hold up. Don't worry about it. Um, I also have some straps behind this to hold this in place. But uh, inside here, we have carbon fiber hockey sticks. And this is a carbon fiber panel that I laid over those hockey sticks to wrap around it. This fancy little strap up front is just to keep your stuff squished towards the front of the sled in case you need to carry a dog or you want to have things you're not going to be using on the run. Light stuff generally pushes up towards the front, your cooker, your sleeping bag, stuff like that. And then you have a little more working space back here so it helps keep everything separated. Or of course, if you don't need it, it's just out of the way. Um, in between the bed and the sides, we have a fabric in there. So that's where we have a huge disparity when the sled bends, you need to be able to have, because it does torque and it twists a little bit. So you need to have something flexible in there. And that's where we had to kind of combine sewing fabric and carbon all into one piece here. So again, when we close the lid, 
One of the things I love about these lids is it's so easy to buckle it down. It's much quicker than a zipper, especially here, and retain our flexibility despite having rigid pieces. Brakes are pretty important. Um, nothing super fancy on this, but uh, you're gonna step on this brake to stop the team. And you have your track to slow the team. Uh, this track can just kind of rub along, especially if you have it hooked on this setting down here. You know, you kind of want it to be able to touch the ground sometimes. So I can unhook that and easily catch it with a heel, slow it down. Or if it's time for full speed mode, we just clip this right up there and it stays out of the way. We can still use our brake. Again, having the bungee in here helps because it can flex. Um, back here, I got my little utilities pouch. Uh, also, this is where I carry my batteries for my headlight that's on the handlebar, my snacks, namely uh, Cheez-Its, animal crackers, beef jerky, so, you know, health food. Um, that rides right in there. And my thermos pouch for water, but generally, let's be honest, it's coffee. Moving back, <laughs> this back section, I've got the cooler for feeding the dogs. It also serves as my seat. Um, this bag back here is a really lightweight bag. I just stuffed a camping pad in there just to poop it out so you can kind of get the idea. But generally what I'm throwing in this bag is my anorak, the big overcoat, uh, my park if I'm not wearing it, my giant over snow pants, my big over boots. So when I leave a checkpoint, I'm gonna be wearing not a whole lot. I wanna be able to move quickly, take care of the dogs quickly. And because I'm moving, I'm staying warm. Once I get out on the trail and I'm sp more stationary, I need to be able to access that big fluffy stuff, put it on. So this bag will probably start out nice and big. And then as I'm going, it's gonna shrink down because I'm putting on all the gear in there. So it's for light stuff. It can easily be disconnected. It's just looped on there. It can be easily disconnected if there's nothing in it. Or if I just wanna have that space to put straw, I can remove this and this and put a bale of straw there. That's another option. And this stuff goes in the sled. A little backrest. Um, this platform is all carbon fiber foam core. That one took me a while to build. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I said, how the heck am I going to figure this out <laughs> while building this sled, um, I'd be a very rich person. This one right here, what it does is it keeps your runners flat on the ground. So when we flex the front of the sled, it's actually more twisting the runner. And it puts that little corkscrew, and that's what's going to steer the sled. But for that corkscrew to happen, the backs have to stay flat. So I can bend the front of the sled, and you see this still stays flat to the ground, creating that corkscrew, which gives you some turning kind of angle along the whole length of that runner rather than just the front arc of the runner. So it serves that purpose of keeping everything stationary. It's also a platform where I can you know, store stuff. It's a little bit longer than is strictly necessary. Most of my sleds come to here. But since this carbon is so light, I figured why the heck not have an extra you know, 10 inches, 11 inches of storage space where I can put a bag like this or where I can remove this cooler and this, and this pops right off the top of these hockey sticks and I can drop down a, a bale of straw or a whole food bag if I want, whatever needs to go there. It sounds really simple when you put in a couple minute video, <laughs> especially considering the number of hours we put into designing. Most of that, I guess, happened over the past several years as I've thought about building a more rigid sided sled uh, removing the sled bag and really the big value to removing a sled bag is it's a surprisingly large amount of weight and when it's dry in your shop and you weigh a sled bag it might weigh five to eight pounds depending on the materials used but the true weight of that sled bag is when you go through creeks and slush and overflow it absorbs a lot of water so if you weigh your sled bag right at the end of a race for example it's going to weigh 12 or 15 pounds because there's so much moisture soaked up in it also, you get a lot of ice that's on your bed, it's kind of trapped between your sled bag and the bed of your sled. So by removing that sled bag, it doesn't really do anything structural to help you. It's easy weight to get rid of without weakening the sled at all. And so I think the actual weight of this sled is much less than the one I'm going to be starting with. Um, even though here dry in the shop, there's only maybe about a 10, 8 or 10 pound difference. On the race, it's magnified because of that snow collected. This whole sled with everything on it weighs nothing, <laughs> um, especially with the brakes and all on there, I'm setting on a snow hook. It's just a very light sled. Uh, I don't think we've given up anything structural over the sleds I've used for years. The basic design with the hockey sticks, you know, here and here is pretty much the same. We've mostly just replaced the heavy materials, UHMW plastic, the fabrics that absorb water, replace those with carbon fiber. And uh, that carbon actually adds strength. We do have a little more rigidity, for example, between this hockey stick and the one that runs here. 
that adds a little extra strength in there. So I think we have a lighter, faster, stronger sled. We've got a heck of a dog team to put in front of it. And I'm really excited to get to McGrath, switch to this sled, and uh, hopefully fly from there to Nome and get there as fast as possible. And hopefully that's faster than anybody else. <laughs> so that's my ride.